Today I'm going to use the little hobby CNC mill that I recently assembled to make a shock mount for my studio microphone. For the audio that I record from a script, including things like the video you're now watching and my scam baiting stuff, I use a Blue Yeti USB microphone. It's not by any means a professional piece of kit, but it serves pretty well, and the simple convenience of recording straight into a computer via USB for me outweighs the potential fidelity improvements that might be gained by a more professional setup. One thing that has been lacking in my setup is a shock mount for the mic. I just had it mounted directly onto the end of the boom pole, and this means that the microphone can very easily pick up noise from the floor, transmitted through the metal pole into the body of the microphone. Of course this can be mitigated by just being more careful and by making some retakes when there is noise, but a shock mount would be better. Standard microphone shock mounts are easy to find and they're quite cheap, but they won't fit the Blue Yeti on account of it being, I believe the expression is, a bit of a thick boy. There are official and third party shock mounts made specifically for the Yeti and designed to affix to the half inch thread on the base, but these are still not cheap and anyway I did kind of fancy making my own. I initially thought I would make something that fixes on the base of the microphone, like the official mount, but it seems to me this would just get in the way of the cables. So instead I thought I'd make use of the side mounting screws that fix the mic onto the desk stand that it's supplied with. This desk stand, by the way, although superbly engineered, is pretty useless as it only has a thin layer of foam to isolate it from whatever you stand it on. And if that's a table on which you're typing, or even just resting your hands, it's going to pick up a lot of noise from there. So the basic idea is going to be to make a pair of vaguely bone-shaped things that screw onto the sides of the microphone, and then a vaguely wishbone-shaped thing that fits around the mic, and links to the other parts with elastic shock cord. I just designed the parts in easel, which is fairly easy to do, although one of the things I find not so easy here is to get the things to be perfectly symmetrical. Anyway, I eventually got it to where I thought it needed to be. I also designed a little link thing for joining the ends of the elastic cord, and some spaces for the side screws, which in the end it turned out I didn't really need. I decided to cut the parts out of some second-hand offcuts of 5 and 8mm acrylic that have been lying unused in my workshop for well over a decade. This material's a bit scratched in places, but it was free, so I'm not complaining. The little CNC machine is just about big enough for the parts I wanted to make, although the spindle motor is really weedy. Even with taking cuts of less than half a millimetre deep in plastic, at a feed rate of only 200mm per minute, it still struggled a bit. There's actually no way I'm going to try using this thing to machine, even soft metals like aluminium, but for plastics and wood, I reckon we'll get by for now. So after a couple of hours of cutting, all of which went fairly smoothly, we've got all the parts we need. So let's assemble the shock mount. And to my slight surprise, it all went together pretty well. I initially thought I was going to mount the wishbone shaped piece horizontally, which is part of the reason it looks so bulky and over-engineered. I just didn't want it to snap or bend under the cantilever arrangement. 
However, it turned out that this puts a bit too much torque on the little ball joint mounting it to the pole, and it tended to sag over time. But, serendipitously, my clumsy over-engineering of size, tolerances and materials meant that I could just switch the wishbone piece into a vertical alignment, so the microphone's hanging underneath it, which is much better. If I was going to do this all over again, I think I would slim down the wishbone piece so it's not so big and bulky, and I think in the vertical alignment it could just be made out of 5 mm acrylic, the same as the other parts. And I think the other parts could probably stand to shrink down a bit too, but this is plenty good enough for now. Let me know in the comments what you might have done differently. If you're interested in making one of these yourself, and you want to use, abuse, or modify my designs, or if you just want to laugh at how clunky they are, there will be links in the video description to the files in various hopefully useful formats. I hope this was interesting, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.